tight end. And I think it's it's pretty obvious here, King, but I want to ask you, what position is Stanford the U at? You know what? I don't want to steal your thunder um, because I, I know as a biology major, uh, you're just wanting to jump in and just and just, you know, prove you're the smartest guy in the room. I'm going to give you the tight end. That is very clearly what Stanford is the U at. If, if they're the U at any position, it's tight end. But I do want to raise you a one other position that I think could contend, at least if you look at a long-term basis, for Stanford's best position in the NFL, and that's running back. I think when you look at Stanford's success at running back, I don't think that's going to be something that continues as this program shifts uh, towards more of a pass-happy offense. But when you look at a program that produced Bryce Love, Christian McCaffrey, Toby Gerhardt, Tyler Gaffney, Stephen Taylor. I mean, these are some of the best running backs in the Pac-12, particularly over the last decade. And, and when you look at Christian McCaffrey, he might be the best player in the NFL at this point. Bryce Love, I think, should be the starter in Washington or is certainly going to have a bigger role this year if he can stay healthy. Um, and it, it is just a position that Stanford has sent multiple guys to, to New York for the Heisman Trophy ceremony. And it's not a position that it, that's very easy to succeed in in today's game. And I think that part of the reason why Stanford did succeed at running back so much is because it was a focus. They focused on the offensive line. They focused on running the ball well. And that panned out with multiple electric players. And I think I mean, it really climaxed with McCaffrey and Bryce Love back to back. Um, and we'll see who's next to fill that, that void. I really do think Austin Jones is a good back who, you know, was recruited during Bryce Love's success story. Where's number 20? You know, it's, it's going to be hard to live up to the last guy to live to wear number 20, but I do think Austin Jones is going to be an all Pac 12 level player. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't disagree with you there at all. I think running backs really impressive and they've had a great record there. They've done a lot with the O line too. And I was looking at um, sports illustrated had a pretty good series where they quantify the past 10 years of positions from going from the collegiate level to the pros. And, and they saw that Stanford did pretty well. They uh, ranked 10th in all of college football at O-line. They were 10th at QB as well, and 5th at the running back, which was highest in the Pac-12. So historically, tailback U, that's been USC. And historically, there's been some other schools in the Pac-12 who maybe have had it, but I totally agree with you there. Stanford had done a great job at running back. But then we got to talk about those tight ends because, wow, have they been good. And yeah, I mean, Morgan Turner, who's, who's been the tight end coach for a lot of these, has done a, has a great job in developing all of them, recruiting them, and then and watching them go off. Zach Ertz, Kobe Fleener, Austin Hooper, Levine Toilolo, Dalton Schultz, Caden Smith, Kobe Parkinson. This is a great list of extremely talented players. And honestly, pretty impressive. I, I was just going through it. We've, I think, let Stanford drop off of our minds recently in the Pac-12. We've let them kind of slip and say, you know what, maybe they're not that team. Throughout the 2010s, this was Stanford's conference. They dominated, not only on the field, but also getting guys to the NFL. They did a great job. And I think tight end, obviously, was one position where they excelled at that. And then seeing them do what they did in the NFL, really awesome to watch. You just read off that list, and it, it blew my mind. I mean, when you just look at – at how many successful NFL tight ends spent their college years on the farm. It's truly ridiculous. And you know what? This may not be true anymore, so we need to talk about the future of tight end you. But there was a point there where I don't see, if you were an elite tight, elite tight end, why you would go anywhere else. Because Stanford was a place that valued you, that developed you both as a blocker and a pass catcher, um, and a place that just had such a proven track record that NFL teams are going to trust, even if your stats aren't eye-popping that you're getting the right kind of training as an NFL-style tight end. And now that's one thing I worry. You and I have both at times pushed for Stanford to become more of a spread team, uh, to, to really rely more on their skill position talent, and tight ends are a part of that. But in today's college football world, tight ends are really just big wide receivers. And I think what we're seeing is that Stanford is really emphasizing the wide receiver recruiting. I mean, you look out, there's been a number of, of those offers in that 2022 class, seven wide receivers already offered. That's significantly more than in past years. That shows that that's kind of where, where they're focusing. And at the same time, if you look at the number of tight end offers, there's been four. And none of those guys are all that close to committing to Stanford because I think if you look at it, Stanford may be kind of shifting away from tight end U, which will be a real shame because that's a position where Stanford has dominated 
um, that college to NFL pathway for a long time. Yeah, and I think hopefully they stick with that some of that identity. I think I really hope that. And I, you made a great point earlier. I want to go back to they trust that people out of Stanford, even despite their numbers, are ready for the next level. Colby Parkinson was just drafted in the fourth round by the Seahawks. His pass catching numbers last year were not all that impressive. But most of it, most often, he was getting double teamed, triple teamed, because everyone knew that Stanford had this six, seven tight end over the middle that they were going to go to quite frequently. And if I can cut you off for one second, and everybody knew that Stanford's play calling is so simple that that's where they wanted to go with the ball in key situations. But all right, you continue, please. Absolutely, um, but that they trusted that they were that Kobe Parkinson was it, and from what we saw, especially when he was next to Caden Smith, he's absolutely it. I think we're going to have to really see what Stanford puts out in the spring this year because they don't have that elite pass catcher that we've seen in past years. They do really like uh, Tucker Fisk, especially as a blocking tight end. Uh, Pritchard had a recent comment, the offensive coordinator, Tavita Pritchard, that he may be the best blocking tight end that we've seen out of Stanford, but not that same pass catching. And similar with Scooter Harrington, who's an absolute beast, but not going to be that role that Caden Smith and Colby Parkinson have been in. It's for Stanford where they're really just – the focal point of the offense. So where Stanford goes in the future is going to have to do a lot with their tight ends, right? It is one position that they've excelled at. And now we see they have some people coming in. They have 2020, the freshmen coming in, Lucas Unger and Ben Yurasek, both three stars, right? But we've seen Stanford develop tight ends over the years. So wouldn't be surprised if one of those comes out and is a high NFL draft pick in the future. We'll have to see. Yeah. And I, you know, I do think that there's something